For my project, I chose the case the State of Arizona versus Jody Ann Arias. This was a criminal felony homicide case. Prosecution Juan Martinez charged 27-year-old Jody Arias with the first-degree murder of 30-year-old Travis Alexander. Arias was represented by appointed counsel Kirk Nermi and Jennifer Wilmot. The trial began on January 2, 2013. Prosecutor Juan Martinez presented the following. On June 9, 2008, Mimi Hall was expected to join Travis Alexander on a trip to Cancun. She had not heard anything from him for five days. Hall and a friend visited Alexander's home to search for him and they found his body. Estefan Flores, a detective from Mesa Police Department, and Juan Martinez searched the scene. They found Alexander stuffed into the shower. Based on the color of the extremities, he had been in there for quite a while. A 25 caliber casing was found on the ground on the scene. No weapons or ammunition were found in the home. The scene had been partially cleaned up, the bedding had been removed, and it appeared as if Alexander had attempted to be rinsed off. There were no signs of forced entry, making the belief it was an inside job. A digital camera had been put through the washing machine with some towels, and the memory card was sent to forensics to retrieve the images. During the investigation, Jody Arias comes forward to Mesa Police offering information on their background and DNA evidence as many other friends had. She gives the background of a romantic relationship that she and Travis Alexander had beginning in 2007. After their brief long distance relationship where Arias was living in Southern California and Alexander was living in Mesa, Arizona, the couple mutually decided to break it off but remained close friends. Not long after the breakup, Arias moves to Mesa to become closer to the religious LDS community Alexander had helped her join. Arias and Alexander continued to see each other sexually, but had kept this secret as it violated their religious law of chastity. In 2008, Alexander broke it off completely, and Arias moved back to live with her grandparents in Northern California. Wairika police officer Kevin Fredman testifies that on May 28th, a week before Alexander's murder, the grandparents of Arias reported a burglary where electronics and a 25 caliber pistol had been stolen from the home. This is significant because a casing of the same type of gun was found at the scene. However, Mesa Police Department never recovered a weapon. During her first interrogation with Mesa Police, Arias claimed to not have been in Arizona during the time of the murder. She claimed that she was taking a road trip from California to Utah. She left Rairica, California on June 2nd, then headed to Southern California to visit some friends. She arrived to Utah on June 5th, the day after Alexander was killed. When she arrived to Utah, her friend Ryan Burns testified that Arias had dyed her hair brown and had cuts on her fingers from which she says was from bartending. The trip took over 48 hours. However, based on her alibi, 18 hours are unaccounted for. Before this trip, Daryl Brewer gave Arias two five-gallon gas cans. There are no receipts from gas stops in Arizona. This helped the prosecution prove premeditation that Arias had a plan to get in and get out of Arizona without being noticed. It was also during this first interrogation with Mesa police that forensics pull the images from the camera. These images contain sexual photos of Alexander in the shower and sexual nude photos of Arias. All the images are date and time stamped with June 4th, 2008, around 5.30. A photo is also revealed of a bloody Alexander and a foot and pant leg believed to be Arias. Arias' hair and bloody handprint were also found at the scene of the crime. On day two of interrogation, Arias admits to visiting Alexander at 3 a.m. for a sexual encounter. After this encounter, two people broke into the home and killed Alexander. She ran into the closet and fought them by hand, and that's where the cuts on her hands came from. They threatened to find her and kill her if she were to say anything, and this is why she did not use that the first day of interrogation. Arias changed her story again, this time in the courtroom, claiming that Alexander pushed her further into a sexual relationship and became abusive. According to Arias, the dysfunction of their relationship reached its climax 
when she killed him in self-defense after he became enraged when she dropped his camera, forcing her to fight for her life. She claimed that Alexander chased after her, so she went to the closet to retrieve the gun and shot him in the head. He continued to struggle, and that is why she had to stab him. This conflicts with what the autopsy showed as reported by medical examiner Kevin Horn. The third change in story caused Arias to lose a lot of credibility with the jury, which only helped the prosecution prove their case. Prosecutor Juan Martinez's opening statement places revenge in an email that Arias knew that Alexander was taking Hall to Cancun instead of Arias. He wanted the jury to understand the brutality of the murder. Medical examiner Kevin Horn testifies that Alexander sustained 27 stab wounds, a slit throat, and a gunshot wound to the head above his right eyebrow. Alexander's jugular vein, common carotid artery, and trachea had been slashed. He also had defensive wounds on his hands and arms. Based on the wounds, a gunshot to the head would have incapacitated Alexander, meaning that the stab wounds and defensive wounds must have happened before the gunshot. Arias spent 18 days on the stand, testifying the abuse she endured. She said that on January of 2008, Alexander shook Arias while saying, I'm fucking sick of you, then began screaming at her, after which he body slammed her on the floor at the foot of the bed, taunting her, saying, don't act like that hurts, before he called her a bitch and kicked her in the ribs. Afterward, Arias said, he went to kick me again and I put my hand out. Arias held up her left hand in the courtroom, showing that her ring finger was crooked. Juan Martinez cross-examined this evidence with an image of Arias posing with a friend, her arm around her friend's shoulder. This picture was taken five months after the alleged attack, and in this image, Arias does not appear to have a damaged finger. Clinical psychologist Janine DeMart testified for the prosecution, stating that she found no evidence Alexander had abused Arias and no evidence of PTSD or amnesia in Arias. Furthermore, Arias has claimed social total memory loss for long stretches of time was inconsistent with traumatic amnesia associated with P PTSD, which manifests as much shorter gaps in memory. Instead, DeMarti said Arias suffered from borderline personality disorder, showing signs of immaturity and an unstable sense of identity. People who suffer from such a disorder have a terrified feeling of being abandoned by others, DeMarti told jurors. Mimi Hall was taken to the stand. She testified that the most she touched Alexander was a hug and she felt very safe with him. Hall testifies that Arias had slashed Alexander's tires, broke into his email and bank accounts, and was stalking him. She also testified that Arias would sneak into Alexander's house through the dog door and sleep on the couch without him knowing. Alexander had reported to friends in the past that he was scared of Arias and the actions she was making. Juan Martinez brought out a diary of Arias in which there are zero entries of Alexander hitting her or being a pedophile, as Arias had claimed. In one entry, she writes in detail how in love she is with Alexander. On May 7, 2013, after 15 hours of deliberation, Arias was found guilty of first-degree murder. Out of 12 jurors, five jurors found her guilty of first-degree premeditated murder and seven jurors found her guilty of both first-degree premeditated murder and felony murder. Prosecution requested the death penalty. The jury could not come to a unanimous decision to which Judge Sherry Stephens declared a mistrial. After a second trial in the sentencing phase, the jury still could not make a unanimous decision. Based on Arizona state law, prosecution only receives two tries to request the death penalty. Jody Arias did not receive the, the death penalty. She is currently serving a lifetime imprisonment without the possibility of parole in Arizona State Prison Complex. In a reflection of what kind of deterrence works best for this crime, I can only think of creating environments where men can come forward with reports of stalking and harassment. Had Alexander been able to report the stalking that Arias was doing, it could have protected him from the murder she committed out of jealousy. 
If I was the defense, I would have continued with the stance that Arius killed Alexander out of self-defense. The defense had recordings of the phone sex between Arius and Alexander, and a testimony from an ex of Alexander's um, testified that he was a highly sexual man. This content was enough to prove that Alexander was a sexual deviant and pervert, which was very much taboo in the LDS community of Mesa, Arizona. It is from this point that Arius could have painted herself as the victim to this abuse.